Nikki Meets, we are back. We are so fucking back. Oh, and boy, it feels so is good it to be back. Good to be fucking back. I'm ready to talk food today, Nikki. I, I woke up this morning and I just felt good on the inside because I knew we were going to be recording today and the ideas were flowing. I haven't stopped thinking about it since since this morning. I'm ready to go and I'm ready to give you po- quite possibly the best top five we've ever done on here but we'll get to that later who do we got coming on today bob we, we talked to before the show you think you got the top best top five segment we've ever had yes. i think i have the best question i have ever had for you and i know we don't want to set the bar too high but we're going to set it even higher because today we got somebody coming on the pantry boys that we have spoken a lot about and, and we it was only a matter of time before we got him on here uh we've mentioned him we mentioned him twice now on the pod and that person goes by the name of Jack Arnold on Instagram. And Jack is quite possibly the most interesting man on the planet. What he's done for his brand is he's taken something he loves to do, which is uh, grilling and smoking steaks, uh, sausages. Just he's a, he's, a, he's a grill guy. He's a, he's a barbecue guy. And he's turned it into a business to where the Four Seasons has hired him to do these barbecue events to which he's got like four big green eggs going. Say, yeah. You actually went, you actually went to one now. I, I went to one of these events and he has people travel around with him. Like he's fucking Led Zeppelin. <laughs> like they, they're like, group. They, they, they go around to these events that he puts on for the four seasons and he cooks up steak and you said it best. He's a grill master. He's a grill master. He's got so he's got more energy than anybody I've it ever met. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is, what kind of day he's had, he's going to bring the energy. And he's super passionate about steak. You ever hear him talk about steak? It is. He could go on for days about steak. And he puts on these events. And we went in New Mexico. Me and my buddies took an RV down to go That's to awesome. a Jack Arnold experience. And he, it's like he's putting on – it's hard to imagine that somebody can put on a show grilling a steak. He's grilling the steak. Then he comes by your table. He cracks a couple jokes. You turn around. <laughs> he's back grilling the steaks again. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I told him, too. I said, I said, Jack, you might be the only human being on this planet that can do what you do. I mean, he's got guys. Last time he did one at, at, a, at a country club, and he had friggin' flames go up behind him when he walked out. <laughs> And not he from the grill, DJ he in had flames. The- no, no, uh, he's what are they called? Um, the sp- uh, it's like he was coming out for like out of the locker room. It was like the WWE John Cena just comes out. <laughs> Instead, it's Jack Arnold, and then he goes and, and proceeds to grill you a tomahawk yeah, ribeye. There's, there's smoke coming out, and he there's comes out with a couple out everywhere. sirloins in his hand. <laughs> and he's like, he's he, and he's, he's screaming. He's he's sweating. He's just one. He's just hard to describe unless you've encountered him like in person. He's a gem of a human being. He'd go to the end of the earth for you. We're going to bring him on. And if there's anybody who I'm just not worried about in the slightest when it comes to talking food, it would be him. I mean, this guy used to used to talk to me in a car about like muscle fibers and how they expand. And like when you when you heat them up, I said, Jack, just cook me the fucking steak, man. You know, yeah, the last thing I'll say about Jack is he loves to connect people with Tyler Cameron. We when we were out at this uh, Jack Arnold event, we met up with Tyler Cameron and we all took a picture in front of the barbecue. It was all me and my friends. We RV down, me, Tyler, and everybody. We get back from the vacation. The day we get back, there's a big thing on TMZ front cover <laughs> that says Tyler Cameron heats up Santa Fe and Tyler Cameron's in the corner of the picture. So it's pretty much just me and my friends yeah, on yeah, TMZ yeah. <laughs> with Jack Arnold just like throwing up the deuces in the air. I, I tell you what, too. It's like everybody you come across in this space has one tie to Jack Arnold. I yes. mean, he's got his hand in every single category. He markets himself like a fucking champion. This guy is one of a kind. He's going to have one of a kind food takes. We're really hyping the shit out of this episode. We are. And yeah. I'm ready for it. I'm going to man. We're going to have the best episode to date. And I'm calling it right now. This is going to be the best fucking episode we've had yet on the pantry boys. We're going to bring him in. Let's go. Bring him in. The bar could not be higher for Jack Arnold. Nikki meets. Let's give him a warm round of applause here. Here he comes. Ladies here he and comes. Gentlemen. Where's he at? Here he is. There he, he is. is. Here, here he is. is. Here bring, he is. Him bring, bring him in. in. Bring, bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. My brothers, what's happening, gentlemen? How are you today? Coming to you from North Carolina, no, Mr. Arnold. 
That is correct, my good man. How are you doing today, sir? Jack, we are doing better than you, and the reason me and Meats are doing better than you is because we set the bar so high for you. You, where... yeah. Yeah, we just hyped the shit out of you, Jack. I mean, the bar couldn't be set higher. But to be honest, I was telling Bob, if there's any guy who's going to just take that bar and knock it the <laughs> fuck down, it'd be Jack Arnold. I, I, I just got no doubt in my mind. My man, I'm telling you, the, the bar is not my child, but I was born to raise that shit, so I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> well, th- Jack, we, okay, now me and Meats gave the best that we could do uh, on from our th- version of what Jack Arnold does. If you could uh, kind of describe to the folks just the legend behind Jack Arnold and what you do. And do it in a Jack Arnold way, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to. I think that's an easy request. My name is Jack Arnold. I live here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a barbecue event host for Big Green Egg and Cow Steaks. I do events across the country. You know, we do country clubs, we do hotels, we do private dinners. We, we get down and we rock out across the country. We bring positive energy and positive vibes through the name of barbecue. And that's just turned out to be a way of life that I never knew would even exist. But it has brought me to places I never knew were possible. And it's brought me to extraordinary gentlemen like the two that I'm talking with right now. So cheers to you guys. Cheers to you, Mr. <laughs> hey, Jack, what do you got in there, Jack? <laughs> uh, just a little Jocko fuel. I'm not going to upset there. you guys and drink alcohol. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> what do you expect, Robbie? Come on, man. <laughs> the energy is unbelievable. <laughs> now, Jack, what, what Meat said before we brought you on was very true. And you think about barbecue, and it's hard to imagine that you could put on such a show while grilling a steak. But I to- was telling me, Meats were talking about, I've been to one of your events. It is such yes, a show. Have. And he said, I, you kind of got the John Cena thing going on to where you come <laughs> out. There's smoke in the back. and, and They and got the cameras all around you. You're screaming. <laughs> you're yelling. You're bringing the energy. I mean, I, you just... Not many people, in fact, I would say, I could probably count them on my hand, could, could just bring the energy like you can. It's unbelievable. Oh, man, that means the world to me. Thank you so much. I, I feel the energy is absolutely everything. Yes. In any environment that you're in, it doesn't matter what you do, what your expertise is or what arena you're in. Energy is absolutely everything. We want to believe the food and the grill will talk for itself, but you got to keep the engagement, keep the vibe, and let people know how special they are for spending their evening with you. I mean, that's Absolutely. what it is, is bringing the energy because Absolutely. people need it more than ever. And when you do it through barbecue, it's really cool. And you get to throw a little fire in the sky. So what's wrong with that? Jack, you know? Jack, now, I mean, I'm sure Meats kind of gave you the lowdown on, on how we do things here. And if there's anybody that's going to have a food take, it, it's going to be Jack Arnold, no, Nick yes, I Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I, I, I am so curious what's about to come out of you. Like, I have no idea where this is going to go, but I do know that it's going to be fucking electric, whatever you say. And I think it's going to be well thought out. You're just the right man for the job. So without further ado, Jack, the take is on you. We want to hear it. Jack, give us a drum roll. Here we go. Stage is yours, Jack Arnold. Stage is yours, baby. We are ready to rock. First off, uh, it's my honor to be here with you guys. I've known you both for quite some time. I love what you all do. It's an amazing deal. The, um, The love is there. The vibes are there. I always say, love your family, love your friends, love your children, love your wife, and always be honored to be a pantry boy for life. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, Mr. Arnold with the Mr. riddle Arnold now. With the so here we go. The poetry. What I'm bringing to the table is something that we all know and we all love, something I've specialized in for a long time, but everyone has their own way. I am bringing to you the world of burgers, and oh, we're going to talk nice. about that and how we do it and what's wrong and what's right and everything that you like because we all make them, but we do we ever really make them exactly how we want? Well, I've really turned into kind of a guru and I learned that it all starts at the beginning. If you don't you know, start with a quality product, the last thing you're gonna end with is a quality product. So always, you know, when you're starting with the meat, you always wanna use at least an 80-20 meat that has the 20% fat so that it cooks down well, or else you're gonna start with a dry burger from minute one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So you're, you're saying basically, Jack, if it, unless that beef doesn't have 20 percent of the fat in the, in the meat, you said the burgers fucked. There's no way it's the not going to be, be as good. juicy as what you hope. I mean, I've tried with 85, 15, uh, 93, seven does not work, man. I'm telling you, it just doesn't work. It's it's sawdust, <laughs> but you want to keep it juicy. And a big mistake that people make when they get their meat is they throw in their seasonings with the meat. 
and then they form the patties with that. That's just that's not the way you do it. So and how do you, you do it, Jack? Well, you you actually seen me do this in person, Nikki. What we do is we form the patties uh, yes. in the good good size that you prefer, and then you season the the uh, the meat on the outsides that which forms the crust, and it doesn't dry out the burger. Absolutely. So I've always felt, or at least for a while now, I've felt that anything over eight ounces, anything over a half pound of meat, is too much meat for a burger. I just Absolutely. feel that it's too much. Uh, We've no, all I agree. done it before, but. That's why I feel half pound is the absolute max for meat on a burger. I agree. I mean, and to the folks listening and watching at home right now, you are getting a first class education yeah. on how to make a uh, how to make a proper burger. There's nobody else you'd rather hear talk about making a great burger other than Jack Arnold. So if you're paying attention and 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 are are, are intrigued on how to make a good burger, you better take out a fucking notepad because this is going to be the most valuable information you'll ever come across when it comes to making and a burger. Jack, can, can that I, means the world. Can I ask you this? And, and and by the way, I agree with the compared to the lean and the fat. I've noticed that if it is anything, I've even done it when I like make uh, you know like a bolognese back home. Yeah, if, exactly. The, the leaner that it is, you just don't get the flavor. Uh, you don't. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And then my question to you, Jack, because I see you as a, a big brioche bun guy when you do your hamburgers. Absolutely. Yep. He yes, lives sir. for the brioche bun. Yeah. Would I love you him. Say I love that the, Would you say that the brioche bun is the throne of hamburger buns? Do you dabble in the sesame? Talk to me about your buns. I dabble them a little bit. I, brioche is my go-to, and you, you know you know me well because I've been doing that for a long yep. time. Yep. I love a good King's Hawaiian bun. You know, I love a good Martin's potato roll. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have the opportunity, I mean, you're already going with a really quality meat. You probably got quality cheese. Get a quality bun just so you're giving Absolutely. a 100% effort Absolutely. on the best burger. Because now let me ask you something, Jack. When it comes to the bun, okay, you say you yes, like sir. to use a brioche bun. Are you a fan of putting that bun? on the grill or on a hot surface to maybe make it a little toasty or, or I you love just how you take... say that now it's very common. I will put both of them on there, but I will always, always put the bottom bun on the grill. No so matter you what. don't fuck with the top bun. You just sometimes stick the bottom bun. Sometimes you do if you want like a fluffy top bite, but I always toast the bottom bun because you got heavy meat and cheese and stuff. And you don't want it to necessarily soak through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So that's why you so that's why I brought up because I always find when I have an 80, 20 patty burger, and then I don't toast at both sides of that bun. When I bite into it and the juice goes everywhere, the bun kind of gets soaked on both yeah, sides. Exactly. So, but, and that's, but, but you're saying you just want to toast the bottom. Is that what you're saying? Most of the time, I'm going to always just toast the bottom bun so that I have that little bit of crunch and I've got the support that I need for a heavy burger. See, you know, you've seen me do like 10, 12 ounce burgers before, and that's just yeah. for fun. You know, it's not yeah. really to do. My sweet spot, and I have a digital, you know, scale for my <laughs> for my ounces of meat. I like two, three and a half ounce patties with cheese on each of them. That's my sweet burger oh, right there. It's a okay. seven ounce burger with okay. two slices of cheese and three and a half pa- uh, three and a half okay. ounces. Okay, now that each. now that's a nugget where you just gave to it. I mean, you just gave us a fucking nugget by saying yes, that. Yes, sir. Jack Arnold don't fuck with eight ounces. What he does is he takes. Two, you said two patties, and then I take and then two you patties because like, I like I like to make doubles. Yeah, and you can go three ounces. That's fine, but I like three and a half, a little bit more, a little bit meatier bite. Okay, and you got seven ounces of meat on your burger. Seven. Yes, that's, that's unbelievable. You know, Jack, I I actually so you know, and, and folks, you got to follow Jack Arnold on Instagram because you do it in all different ways. And and what I appreciate you about you, okay, is that you'll do the standard burger. But then you also get creative. And I know in the world we do get creative with hamburgers. I actually think that we could even get more creative. And I've seen you do the mac and cheese on the patty, which is exceptional. Yeah. And do you do that every time? No. But is it something to dabble with? No question about it. I almost feel that we could even get more experimental with the – I was in um, I, I was in Nantucket, okay? And I yeah. had a – um, surf and turf hamburger where they had the patty and then they put lobster on top of the patty. And I yeah. know that's wild, but it was phenomenal. Do you think we could get more creative with our hamburgers, Jack Arnold? And that's one thing that I'm so glad you touched on, Robbie, is that burgers are one of the most experimental dishes that you can have. You can do so many different variations of it. And, you know, if you ask uh, our good friend, Paul Swan, we went over to the North Harbor Club at Davidson and he got a crab cake top burger. And it was unreal. That, it's an that, unreal sandwich. Get a little red sauce in there, some tomato. You see, there you, go. you see, fellas, I, I have an issue with that. Uh, to me, 
I think that that's got too much going on on that burger. Like when I imagine eating a perfect burger, I don't imagine a crab cake on a burger. I really don't. I think that it's it, it probably tastes great if you throw a crab cake on the burger. But to me, the mac and cheese, you know, the lobster. All right. Yeah. What the fucking like to me, what makes a good burger is the quality of the meat, the cheese. And then like it's like a special sauce or some sort on 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 top of it. Which leads me to my next question, Jack. I don't know how much you want to give away to the folks at home. I get it, man. I get it. You, like, the magician doesn't want to reveal his secrets. But what would you say your favorite thing from a sauce perfect perspective would be to throw on top of? Like, if you're going to make – here's a better question. Yeah. Sorry. If you're, you're going to make the most perfect burger, okay, okay. you got one opportunity, you're, you're serving it to, to someone – you got you got to make the most perfect burger. What are you going to put on that burger and serve to the person? OK, um, I hope my answer does not upset you by any means, but I have. No, made no, absolutely so many, not. I, I have made so many different burgers. I, I'm blessed to you know be able to try that. I made a taco burger a few weeks ago with salsa, sour cream, uh, tomato, shredded cheese. And there we did a uh, burrata, tomato and basil on top of burger like a burger. Now that a sounds grease. fucking amazing. I mean, I like to go all out. But to answer your question. Of all the things I love doing the most, I still just seem at the very end of the day to come back to the all-American cheeseburger. The two patties, the cheese, some ketchup, mustard, pickles on that toasted brioche. And you've just got something that everybody knows and loves since they were kids. I mean, that's just, it's a, it's a, a taste that you know and you're familiar with that you love with all your heart. I love experimenting. I love it more than anything. And I will put any burger requested in front of that individual, but my go-to will always be the all-American cheeseburger. And, and here's another thing, Nikki. Don't get crazy with the cheese. Don't get crazy and fancy yeah. all gourmet cheese. I always come no. back to American cheese. You always got to go back to the American cheese. Thank I've had you. Gouda. I've had, you know, Swiss. I've had all this sort of shit. And it yeah. doesn't taste the same as just the all-American, American cheese, two patties, ketchup, mustard, and pe- I think, uh, Jack, honestly, it's a perfect answer, but and, Bob's and, got something and for And, Jack, it. again, that's what I like is I like following along on your burger expeditions because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you could be getting the all-American cheese. Then yeah. Thursday, Friday, he'll go crazy on you. Yeah. And then yeah. Just, just put something. It's and, and you keep us on our toes, Jack Arnold. Now, yeah, he does. He does. He does. Yeah, you do. And, and we can't let you go, okay, without – your bread and butter, which is steak. And I, I do have yeah, a question. We got to talk you. steak, Jack. Something day, Jack no did during the pandemic, which was to me brilliant and so much fucking fun. You had me on the show, is he would have you on an Instagram live and do an interview with you while you cook a steak, which was great. The old what steak sesh. Oh, we had a ball. But it was amazing. That I found fascinating, okay? is what the Jack Arnold secret is, if I may, to the Pantry Boy faithful. Go ahead. Is you like to, correct me if I'm wrong, with your steak, you season one side and then don't season the other yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. He seasons one side Bullseye. only. Which is so rare that I don't think you see a lot. Talk me through that. Yep, talk us through that, Jack Arnold. Okay, so, Rob, if I remember correctly, you came to the Four Seasons in Santa Fe to my event in September of 2020, and we made a ton of steaks that night, just a ton across the board. I season one side only because we are using such a high quality of meat. You know, my partner's at Cal Steaks, American Wagyu beef, you've had, it's, it's phenomenal. Only season one side because you're gonna just over salt that incredible piece of meat that, you know, John is a good friend of mine, the founder of them, they take four long cold winters to raise this cattle to make it as quality as it can be. I think it's a disrespect to the farmer to essentially oversalt your meat. Just do that one side, good. season it, crust it, and then when you take your bite, you can always add a little flake salt if you need a little bit more, but always respect the person who raises the cattle. I mean, no one's thinking about the that? fucking guy feeding the cow when they're about to cook a fucking steak. No one thinks of that except no. for Jack. And, and Jack, I, you know, I also have heard – that you sh- if, if you have a quality piece of meat and it's got a lot of fat on it, aren't you supposed to sort of over salt it a little bit or no? Is that not accurate? If it's not as high a quality steak as you would like to have, then yeah, you can season both sides. I just think because the American Wagyu, there's so much of that, what I call natural beef butter 
inside that that steak that you just you want to sear that in and let those juices melt so you enjoy every single bite that's why i think i made you a filet mignon one time i held it up that thing is just a, a spider web of beef butter inside a filet mignon so i i just respect natural beef flavor more than anything and that's why you got to season your one side to crust it and i saw you've been doing that nick on your big green egg you're really impressing me and i love and, it. and and people and people like ridicule for me ridicule me for it and i'm thinking to myself they got no idea where I'm getting my information yeah. from. They got no clue. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you this, Jack. With the amount of sunlight you have coming into your living room right now, if you don't have the big green egg available, you might be able to cook a ribeye in your living room. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, 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 I would do it, but I'd rather stay married, bro. I don't want to smoke up the house. <laughs> All he's got to do is take a tomahawk and put it right on the kitchen <laughs> table. It'll be done in 15 minutes with all that sunlight coming in. It's yeah, unbelievable. It's there we Jack, go. That's, that's what I wanted to ask you about to say, because what I was wondering is you can only really pull off not seasoning one side if it's the quality it, that yes. you got. It should be a quality steak. Correct. It does. It really matters. And I don't, I try my very best to respect every farmer and every rancher in America. It's just that this one has a, a quality product that I haven't had before that I thoroughly enjoy. I have literally cooked it with no seasoning before and it's been delicious, but I, we all just, we try to cut back on our salt intake anyway. It's just, and that's course. the other thing too. Not only is he looking out for the farmer who spent his hard earned sweat and fucking hard work feeding these cows. He's worried about the people that he's feeding as well. And their salt intake. He's worried about the cholesterol. He Jack wants to make sure that when you eat a steak, the next day you could go get a physical and be completely fine when it comes to testing your blood pressure. You know what I mean? Hey, you cut back half your salt intake on, on the steak by only doing one side, so there you go. Jack, Absolutely. That, that's another thing, too. I mean, me and Meats, we could talk food, but we like to bring on the experts who could take us all the way to the farmer. Me and Meats <laughs> might not have ever got to the farmer. <laughs> Jack Arnold's going to take you to the farmer. Jack farm. Arnold's going to take you to the farmer. And and before we let you go, Jack, I just got yes, I, I just got to say, about a month ago, I went down to North Carolina for a day and Jack cooked me a Wagyu strip steak, if I'm not mistaken. Was it a strip? Correct. It's exactly I mean, what we You know what? I, that, that would be a disservice to you. First, he started off with the fried lobster tail. No, first he started off with the caviar. Then he started going with the fried lobster tail. We did cheese curds. We did a tomahawk. We did everything under lobster mac and cheese. And then he puts this strip steak on, on, a, on a pan uh, on what's it called a, a skillet. A cast, oh, cast iron, iron skillet. skillet. Yeah. He throws it on a cast iron skillet. He cuts it. He cuts it open. I take a bite and I shit you not, Bob. It was the most amazing food item I have ever had in my entire life. And the you most told amazing me that at the time. food I item so I've ever gracious. eaten. The best I steak. Believe that. I don't think I'll ever eat a steak better than the one that he cooked me on that cast iron skillet. So, folks at home, if you're listening and you want to know how to make a good burger, I suggest you listen to this man because you're not going to find any better information out there. It's two three and a half ounce patties. If you do anything less, you're a jerk off. Jack Arnold, you're the fucking best. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for bringing the energy. It was an honor to have you. You guys are my favorite people. Thank you both so very much for having me. Thank you all for being extraordinary friends. And I can't wait to see you both again real soon. Best Jack, of times. We all. love you. And, and what I love most about you is it, it's so much beyond just the steak and hamburgers. It's really the Jack Arnold experience. It's the experience. It's the experience. The, you get the energy. You get the food. You're, you're just a good dude. You're an expert at what you do. And we love you, pal. And, and we could not be more thrilled to have you a part of the pantry. It meant more to me than you guys will ever know to be on this show with you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. You're the best in the business. I cannot wait to see you guys soon and cook you both a steak. We love Absolutely. you, Jack. Boy. We love you, Jack. Look, Meats, I, I think everybody's came came on here, every guest, and we truly have had great guests. Phenomenal. As much as yeah, a lot of them were w would give their takes, that was education that, that we just got. That was literally probably the best educational how to cook a burger that anyone could ever receive. And like when I, I mean it when I say it, that when he cooked me that steak, Bob, it, it was the greatest thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. He also did make me a Wagyu beef burger like a few months back. And that was literally, I wouldn't say the best burger I've ever had because I've, I've, I've had extremely good burgers, but it was right there with the best burgers I've ever had. It's unbelievable. Un I mean, to, to start off with the fat to lean ratio. Yeah. No one's thinking. No one. No. Not nobody is going into the to the supermarket 
thinking about the fat ratio and how it's going to make a better burger. And he just he came in and he just knocked it out of the park. He's one of a fucking kind. And I, I'm just so happy that we had him on because I, I think people are really going to going to gain a lot from what he had to say. And he did a thing that not many people could do. And he went in deep to where he took us to the farmer. And when yes. he said the, the yes, unseasoned when he said the unseasoned side about not disrespecting the farmer, I wanted to throw away my salt and pepper. Me, me, me. I wanted to, th- I wanted to throw it in the trash. Every the next season- time I go to somebody's house and they make me a steak and I see them season one side and then flip it over, I'm going to smack them across the face <laughs> and say, do you have any idea what that fucking farmer went through so that you could have a, you could have a quality piece of meat? I mean, I, I thought he was going to say something along the lines of like, you know, like the like how the meat is, like how it should like be standard. No, no, no. He doesn't put salt on one side of the meat strictly out of respect for the guy who's farm. feeding the cows over at the cow steak farm. And God bless him, man. I'll tell you this, meats. He was phenomenal. It was he was great. It he was, was a blast. Yeah. But, but 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 but. Now we get down to business. This is mono e mono, take Bye. for take over to voicemails. We are, I think yep. the new thing that we're doing, I think maybe the way to do it is one person takes the top five and the, the other takes the take. So today will be your top five take. I'll have what I think is the toughest Pantry Boys question of all time. To date, I think I have the toughest question for you I had, and, I, and, the, and the crazy part is like i'm trying to figure out where you're going with that it's and i brutal. have no idea it's i have no idea brutal it's going to be mental warfare it really is it's it's going to be mental warfare but with that being said i think i have the best top five we've done thus far like i am so passionate about this list and and it is going to be the most electric list i think we i think i take this no problem. Like when we put this up on the Instagram, I think I, I take the cake. No problem. Rock Zero. my world. Rock my world. I need Robert Berger. I need your top five cookies. Not cookie brands, types of cookies. That's what I need from you, sir. I need you to give me your top five fucking cookie list. And I know that's hard for you because you're a cookie connoisseur and you're a dessert guy. So I'll go ahead and and, and lay the law out first and give you my list while I give you time to think. Please do. This this is going to be unbelievable. Unbelievable. I have at number one, and I I, I honestly don't think that there's, there's there's a debate on this. I have a warm chocolate chip cookie at number one, like sure. a, like like a homemade warm chocolate chip cookie. I think is the best cookie of all time. I don't think I think it's so, without a doubt, the best cookie of all time. That like there's it, it just up here and everything else is down here. Sure, I really absolutely. do. I, I think it's versatile. I think it's it's awesome when you see when you meet somebody and like they talk about oh my mom makes the best cookies and then I'm like oh no my mom makes the best cookies. I think it's a, a topic of conversation. I think it's done so much for the cookie community. And for that reason, it's at my my number one. Number two is where and everything oh everything on oh boy is where it gets dicey. I don't think this cookie gets enough credit at all. I really don't. I genuinely don't think that this cookie is talked about enough, and that's why I'm going to put it at number two because I'm going to give it the respect that it deserves. I got the M M&M and M cookie. At number two. Okay. Keep the poker face. Keep the poker face. I'm keeping the poker face. I'm keeping the poker face. I got the I got the M&M cookie at number two. I think I don't think I've ever had a bad M&M cookie. I think you get the chocolate chips, the beauty of the chocolate chip cookie. But every now and then when you bite into the M&M cookie, you're going to get a little piece of an M&M and it's going to be like, wow, that was fucking fantastic. Can I I I tell you who does a phenomenal M&M cookie? Absolutely. Phenomenal. A place that I think stinks, but the cookies are great. Subway. Subway. Subway a has phenomenal a great M&M. M&M. They should even stop making selection. Even they should their stop. Cookie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they should really consider getting rid of the $5 foot long and just making Subway a cookie joint. Yeah. Because they, <laughs> yes. Subway should not do subs. They should do cookies. Subway should, yeah, it should, it should be the cookie <laughs> way or some shit. It shouldn't be Subway because they, they're they lacking in the sandwich department. But when you get towards the end of that line and after you just made your Italian BMT, 
They got the best cookie selection you could ever you could ever imagine. I agree. Number three, I got the Oreo. I got the Oreo with number three. Wow, I didn't. I did it when I thought about this. I did yes, it. and I, I did it on purpose Take because that I, into I knew. Account. Yeah, I knew. I knew that you and and like well, last time. I, last I checked, meats that is a cookie. It is a cookie. That you is could a ask. Cookie. You could ask anybody. I think it's a cookie. Tori Deal would agree with us. I think she would. She think would. It's a cookie. She would have probably put it at number one. Probably um, would have put ketchup and cheese on it too. At, at number two. And and to be honest, Tori Deal is the only human being on this planet that could put Oreo at number one instead of the chocolate chip cookie. She's yes. got the exception. Yes. I just think that the Oreo has has really made its made its own mark. And I think that it, it really deserves to be in 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 the list and 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 really be up there with the big dogs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like that freshman that comes in from the middle school team and he just deserves to be on varsity. I think you got to give oreo a, a spot in the list and i put it at number three because i i love an oreo it's not a political answer but if no if it's not Allen's there you gotta let it exactly rock. exactly right exactly right number four again is another cookie that i really think gets flown under the radar i i don't think it's ever really a topic of conversation i think when people talk about cookies this cookie is never it's never mentioned and i i honestly i don't know why i think the snickerdoodle is one of the greatest cookies this earth has ever seen. I think the Snickerdoodle. See, and the reason you're making that face right over there is because you didn't even think to put a Snickerdoodle on the list. And that's my point exactly. I'm doing my best for the people that watch on YouTube to keep my poker face or else I'm going to give up the whole list. <laughs> but I just got so much that I want to say, and I'm just ready to, to unload after you give me five. I'm ready to just tee off after I'll you give me five. I'll, I'll give you... I'll- I'll give you my, my, my fifth one. Um, number five, I have like the holiday themed. You'll know what I'm talking about. The holiday themed sugar cookies. Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? I do. I do. I they come in, in, in the very thin rectangular box. Oh, I do. <laughs> and, and, and you just you put them in the oven. I mean, they look like they, they're going to give you diabetes. And you put them in the oven, they come out, and you just eat every single one in the pack. Are, I mean, are, I mean we, you're buying- that, are we talking about with the print in the middle? With the print in the middle. We're yeah. Talking about the oh, the it's such a good fucking cookie. It's a great cookie. And and it's always, you know, and it's just not not only the cookie uh, that, that makes it so great, not only the taste, the texture. It's it's like whenever it was like the holiday season around me at like Halloween, even, uh, like Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, they really dial in to the holidays and and it just adds so much more to that cookie because you're eating it around christmas time it's it it's, it's so a, much better it's a holiday cookie that yeah. talent wise deserves to be recognized outside of the holidays outside of the holidays well you you see this cookie and you know it's christmas time yes it, <laughs> you know christmas is around the corner it's either there or it's around the corner or, or it's around the corner thanksgiving just ended they got christmas tree sugar <laughs> cookies i'm going into the supermarket and i'm going to light up light them on fire Meets, you know, what took place today it was a phenomenal question. A- and I Thank love you. stuff that is going to Thank you. lead to debate. And and that's, I mean, you put that on the Pantry Boys Instagram. It, it's going it, to it, cause a war. It's going to cause a fucking war. Fucking I mean, this right. might be the most, like, debatable topic we've had yet. And I think part of the reason why we did the top fives, A, they're so much fun. B, I loved to see the feedback from the people. And and I I know you watch it. I watch it. I do too. I think it's great. Um, One person said to me the other day, or they tagged us and they said, you guys always have pretty much the same thing. Yes. And I thought about that for a while and I looked back at them and I'm like, he's not wrong. I think we think a lot alike. We we think very similar, but. Which is why when we have a different take, it's an oh my explosion. God, oh, my God. Your list is going to be completely different than mine. We have an explosion. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. And again, that's why when it when it hits and we have something that we don't agree. And I thought for this, I'm thinking cookies. There's there's so many different ones out yeah, exactly, there. Exactly. Exactly. Um, what I'm oh amazed, I think we all know the chocolate chip is at one. And you, can't, at, question that. you can't question that. I, I wouldn't even listen to somebody if that. I, I would get in a very heated argument if someone was to tell me that the chocolate chip cookie is not at number have one. Have to go. You, you can't have anybody fight you on that. It's the throne of cookies, chocolate yep. chip number one. And I knew we would agree on that. I was absolutely shocked when you nailed it with me on the second. Oh, I yes. The second oh. you would go, 
The M&M cookie is just like you said, does not, it, it doesn't get the credit it deserves. And I think it's because we're so used to M&Ms. M&Ms have been along, around yes. for as long as time. Yes, yes. I mean, George Washington was eating M&Ms. George I, I mean, Washington, friggin' Paul, uh, Paul Revere, when he was on the horse telling everybody that the British were coming, he had M&Ms in his right hand. The if, British if not, are coming, and, he, and he's, <laughs> the British are coming. Hold on, hold on. The British are coming. That's what he was doing. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. A, it's a classic. M&Ms have been around for as long as time, as long as time. A- yep. And they're here to stay. I, I was shocked that you went with the M&M cookie. And so we, I got that at two. I'm right with you with that. Do you two. really? Do you, you have it at two? A thousand percent. And it was hard to keep the poker face. I was hoping you would go with something different. And no, no, it. it's a great. Co- and the other thing, too, about m M&M, and like like the cavemen and, and the hunter gatherers, I mean, they they were even eating the M&Ms. They were going out getting berries, and they they saw the M&Ms on the ground. What's this? This is the greatest thing I've ever you know, eaten. We were talking about on last episode how long Doritos has has lasted the test of time. M&Ms have been M&Ms along before way even before, Doritos. Way before. So way I got before. the M&M cookie at two. Um, number three, I'm going to go with something that was not on your top five. And go ahead and lock me in for an oatmeal raisin cookie. Wow. Lock me in on the wow. oatmeal raisin wow. cookie. When I wow. think of that oatmeal raisin cookie, I think wow. about Subway. Wow. I think about Subway. I love a good oatmeal raisin cookie. And by the way, a yeah. very, very popular cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Subway's got a great oatmeal raisin cookie. They, they really, do. They, they, they have do. a great oatmeal raisin. The thing about the oatmeal raisin cookie to me, though, is, is like, you have to be a raisin guy. You, in order to eat the I, like for me, if I, I wouldn't eat a pack of raisins by themselves, I don't like them in my in my salad. I don't like the dried cranberries. I don't like any of that sort of dried fruit shit. So for me, I'll eat an oatmeal raisin cookie because why the fuck not? But I wouldn't I wouldn't put it in my top five just just because of the sole reason I don't really like raisins that much. Again, and, and when I think about these cookies, I, I can't help but. Maybe I'm crazy for that because they have terrible subs. Terrible is, subs. Is I can't stop thinking about Subway. It's, a, it's such a great and, and it's so true because that oatmeal raisin cookie from Subway, I've had it. It's unbelievable. Oh. It really is. It's an unbelievable cookie. I just want to finish that. the sandwich just to get to the cookie. Just to get to the cookie. I don't hate oatmeal raisin at number three. I really don't. I, I respect it. I really do. Good for you, Bob. Go. Um, okay. I guess so I'm going to go oatmeal raisin three. I thought that might start a war. Um, Number four, I'm going with the sugar cookie. And I think there's a broad range of sugar cookies. Yeah, yes. What? Yes. But I agree with that holiday cookie. And it's, you know, for the people who don't know, I would think most do. When you think about that print inside, you can't fuck them up. It's like no matter how long you put it in the oven for, it's going to come <laughs> no, out the exact it, it, same way. Every single time. I mean, it, it's like minute rice. You just put it right in and it comes out perfect every time. It's a phenomenal cookie. Phenomenal it's a great cookie. cookie. And then number five, I got the Snickerdoodle cookie. Are you kidding me? I swear. Are you kidding me? I got the Snickerdoodle cookie. Are you serious? I swear to you, Meats. I absolutely swear to you. Oh. And, I, I, and I know that guy's going to come back who said it. And, and he's, yeah, he's going to light us up, man. He's going to be like, what the fuck, man? I know. I know. But Meats, I'm always going to call it how I see it. Yeah, you have to. No, you have to. I, 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 I mean. So correct me if I'm wrong. The only thing we waver on on the cookie is is number three, where you had the you, Oreo. I, I, I had, had the Oreo, raisin. and you and you had the oatmeal raisin. So you don't think, you don't think the Oreo cracks the top five? I, th- I, I think find that hard to believe. I think it's very close to it, and I think a good reason. I think it's a good cookie. I think a big reason why it's close to the top five is it's an iconic cookie. It's an iconic cookie. It's a very and that and honestly. You got to factor that you in. You know what? You know what the Oreo was like. The Oreo was like that. I I, I don't want to name names, but like players in the MLB who get the big contracts, and then they'll go out and scratch out two seventy five with twenty five yeah. home runs. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, the I, name I, is there, but but you know, performance wise, you know, it's not there sometimes. You know what I mean? The Oreo cookie's coming off my bench. It makes the roster. It's there. It's coming off I, my bench. I. So like the Oreo good enough I mean, to, to, to I know beat number that, three. I know I, that I, that kid's going to come right back at us, but we, we're calling it like we yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, what, what do you want us to do? Lie? Like, what do you want me to put? Not a, a, line, a, not a about double our cookies. chocolate chocolate fudge cookie? 
We're not going to lie about our cookies. I'll tell you that. Honorable much, mention. Honorable mention. The Linden's um, butterscotch cookie. You ever had the Linden's butterscotch cookie? I have, and those are phenomenal. They're phenomenal. And, and it's a phenomenal cookie I'll to tell Linden's you, butterscotch. I'll tell you what we totally left out. In oh, fact. Man. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are you going to make a change? I would like to make a change, and it's not okay. because of that kid. We'll make I would a change. Like to, uh, yeah, no, we'll make. No, I know it's not. I know it's not. Yeah, call it. Calling it change. We want we want a righty on a mound. We uh, want a righty uh, on a mound. I'll tell you what the change we're going to make, and I'm going to feel great about this change. Okay. We, the, 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 the change, the swap has been made before on Pedro. Something that we totally disregarded, totally disregarded, oh is God, Girl Scout you... cookies. Oh. <laughs> and meats. I mean, I mean, I can make a list of just five Girl Scout cookies that I, that I fucking love. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to take my sugar cookie at four. I'm going to put it to five. Five. I'm going to bump the snicker out the, the snicker doodle. The snicker doodle ain't starting today. And then I'm going to put in my four. Now, what Girl Scout cookie are you going to put in? I've always I know this may not be a popular one. The Tango Long for me was always <laughs> the best Girl Scout. I want it's my a tag along. along. At four. It's a, it's it ain't a Tango Long. It's a tag along. What what the fuck is a tang along? It's a tang along. No, it's no, it's not, Bob. It's a tag along. A tang along isn't even a word in the English dictionary. T N G O. No. O L I N E. It's a tag along. Spell tag along. Oh, you want to? No, it's it's a fucking sentence. It's not a word. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, why don't you just tag along? Oh, where are you going? How about you tang along with us? I'm sorry. What'd you say? Yeah, come tang along. You thought you're telling me that you thought tang along was a word in the English dictionary. When the fuck no, have you ever said tang along? I, I didn't think it's in the dictionary. I think it's a Girl Scout cookie. Bob, a thin man isn't one word. Like, why are you telling me a tag along is a sentence? Thin man is. But 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 how would you spell a tang along cookie? <laughs> and by the way, it's not a tang along though. It ain't a. Tang along, but but do you, tang do you, along. you do okay? So you do know the cookie I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, three words T A G tag. No, tag it's two words T A G tag along A L O N G. It ain't a tang along. What the fuck is a tang along? I got it at my four. I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, I got it at my four. Boot out, boot out the stick and do it a fuck. Give me sugar cookie at five. Tag, tag along. Tang along at four. Tag along to the four. Now me. You went, you're 28 years old. 28 years. Correct. You've been calling it a tang along. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And every time I see him, that's what I ask for. I get the exact cookie that I'm expecting. That's my four cookie right there. Now me. I, I, I can't imagine the poor Girl Scouts when they come around selling the cookies. And here comes Robbie Berger with his shirt backwards. And he says, hey. Can I get some tang alongs, please? They they what turn you, to their mom and say, Mom, what, what did he want to give me a thin man? <laughs> <laughs> what did what what did the fuck does this guy want? My, he uh, my he wants a tang along, ma. Well tell him to go fuck himself. We don't have a tang along. <laughs> All, All right, right, All right, right let's, go. let's let's get let's, on with it. Let's get back down to business. Let's get okay. back down to business. I have for you I I I I don't know if I should say it's the best question. It's it's without a doubt the toughest question I think you've received in Pantry Boy history. Okay. 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 I'm ready. I, I, we're doing, I'm waiting for this. I was born for this. Moment. What we're doing today, Meats, is we're playing a little game of Kill Fuck Mary. Oh, okay. We're playing a little Kill Fuck Mary here, and I'm gonna give you three items, and you're gonna have to kill one of these items, and it's gonna be one of the hardest things you've ever had to do. You know, okay. But, but you know what the thing about it, like. Is it going to be like an absurd one no. where it's like, no, no. like you're, you're, you're not going to you're not going to say like pizza, burgers and fucking like steak like that's fucked up. Like you're going to have to get down to business. I'm going to have to make a tough decision. You're going to have to make a very tough decision. Nick Meats. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Kill fuck Mary. Oh, God. Okay. Pasta. The sandwich. What do you mean? Like every sandwich? Sandwich, like every every sandwich. sandwich. The sandwich, 
The sandwich. That's a meatball sandwich. That's a turkey sandwich. Why are you doing this to me? The sandwich. Why are you doing this to me? And three, pizza. So you have oh. pizza, you have pasta, oh. and you have the sandwich. Kill, fuck, marry, Nikki Meats. Stage is yours. Now, we all can agree that this is going to be tough. We all can agree that pretty much Mary is your number one. Fuck is your number two. Three, you're killing. So that that goes for one, two, three. I told you it was going to be tough on you. Beats. I mean, like you couldn't have said like, like, bur- like. I never said it was going to be fun. I never said it was going to be fun. Like pizza, like pizza is. I didn't honestly. I thought you had a, a, enough respect for me to leave pizza out of this. Could you imagine a world without pizza? No. Could you, imagine, you imagine a world, a world without pasta or a fucking sandwich? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Did you just scratch your balls? No, that was my thumb. I would let you know if I was scratching my balls. And okay. that's not to say that I haven't scratched my balls on air. I, I scratch my balls all the time on the I'm show. I'm always digging under. I'm always, I'm always scratching my sack. When we're, but when no, we're, that was the thumb. It's a, it, it's a way for me to think. That was the thumb. Pizza, okay. Okay. sandwich, pasta. Okay. I, I have my answer. And it is just gut wrenching oh, that I God. have to say this out loud. I have no idea where you're going. I'm going to be the first. I'm going to do the marry first. I'm, I'm going to marry pizza because <sighs> for the life of me, I can't imagine a world where there's no pizza. Yeah. If if somehow, some way the world said, you know what? Fuck pizza. We're not making it. Any, we're not making any more pizza for the rest of eternity. I don't know what I would do. Me neither. I mean, pizza is, is my. I, I am super passionate about pizza. I I, I I I I it's, it's, I love it's... pizza. I am in love with pizza. There's a difference between loving something and being in love with something. And I'm in love with pizza. I've never. It, it is fun to watch you struggle because you know that. Yeah, you could marry the I pizza. Can't, that's I can't. I can't get rid all. of pizza. I can't get rid of pizza. I I can't. I'm sorry. There's nothing that pizza is the only food on this planet, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. That when I see a slice, I eat it every single time. Every single time. It is, I have no self-control. I can eat a full pie by myself, no problem. I fucking love pizza. I, when I sit down, people think I'm nuts. I've sat down with like a group of friends and eaten seven slices and left one slice for two of my buddies. No question. Pizza I can't get rid of. I refuse to get rid of pizza. I'm not doing it. That's a great Cinderella story. That's phenomenal. Okay, that's great. I'm I glad that you and pizza. For, I have go to that. war for pizza. I'm glad that you and pizza have that relationship. But one of these three, you're about that to is pizza that is is just absolutely ridiculous. This is ridiculous that I have to do this. It's a tough day at the pantry. It's a very tough day at the pantry. I'm gonna give you a little insight to what's going on in my mind right now. I'm imagining different types of sandwiches. I'm thinking about yeah. different types of sandwiches. The way to go about it. That's the right and now way to I'm, go about and it. And now I'm thinking about different pastas. And I'm just, I got, right now I'm thinking about fettuccine Alfredo. Before it was a turkey sandwich. And let me ask you something. If, hypothetically, if I get rid of a sandwich, if I'm fucking the pasta and getting rid of the sandwich, are wraps and burgers still on the table? I'm keeping wraps on the, I mean, no, no, no. The wraps are off the table. Burgers you can keep on. Great question. Wraps are off the table. I thought about that too. I thought about that too. And I had to draw the line there. Burgers, you're fine. Burgers, you're clear. Wraps are off the table. Chicken season. So I, can never, I can never eat an Italian combo. Buffalo chicken wrap. Off the table. Turkey wrap. Off the table. Philly cheesesteak wrap. Off the table. <laughs> Philly cheesesteak not off the table. Philly cheesesteak wrap. That's a sub. Table. What are you talking about? It's in a he- it's in a fucking hero. It's in a it's a hoagie. Yeah, I guess you got to take. I guess you got to take hoagies off the. I get. I, yeah, I guess you got to take hoagies off the table. I I take that back. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Hoagies off the table. I mean, I'm 
I'm so fucked up right now. Like I'm thinking to myself, well, what if I took the meats and everything inside of an Italian combo and just put it in a lettuce wrap? Would it taste the same? Do you think it would taste the same? You no, know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. But then again, it's like, how are you going to, how are you going to, how are you going to go to Sunday dinner and not eat and not have pasta? Like how are you gonna how are you gonna have a fucking wedding and not have a pasta station? How are you gonna how are you gonna do any of that? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm fucking the sandwich. Oh, he's fucking the sandwich. He's fucking the sa- <laughs> He's fucking the sandwich, ladies and gentlemen. Pantry boys, history. Nikki meets. He's killing the pasta. He's fucking the sandwich, you old dog, you. Oh, baby. What a moment. What a buildup. Nikki Meats has fucked the <laughs> sandwich. Wow. Wow. I'm going to tell you why I'm fucking the sandwich. Okay. I thought to myself, what have I eaten more throughout my life? I've had more sandwiches than I think pasta it's, dishes. It's meats, if I may. That is the perfect way to look at it. That yeah, is the because perfect way to look at that. I haven't. I I I've eaten a shit ton of pasta in my life, but I, I mean, I eat sandwiches. I mean, I eat them all. The, I eat a sandwich all the time. I, yeah. what, what What do you think? You're gonna kill a sandwich? No more PB and J. No more turkey sandwiches with mayo at twelve o'clock at night. Are you fucking out of your mind? I can't do that. I can't do that. I mean, I think it, it's without question. God, the right I way can't to look believe I just got rid of pasta. And when I thought about this list, I swear to you, meats, that's the exact way that I looked at it. It's such a tough thing to do. That and, was and that was draining, man. That was it's draining. It's draining. I've had the time to think about this, so I've already been drained from it. Um, and it, it's just a tough thing to do. I didn't want to have to ask it, but it had to be done. It had so, to be done. No, it had to be done. To reiterate, to Nikki done. Meats has married the pizza. He yes, has for the rest of my life fucked the sandwich and I he has the killed the pasta. And it's going to be hard to look at your next bowl of pasta. It's going to yeah, be very no, hard to look at your next. I'm bowl going to have to apologize to the next bowl of pasta that I eat. Here's where I'm going. OK, I would like to go ahead. And this was very tough to do. I'm going to marry the sandwich. And I hope I hope that the pizza is not at that wedding. Because it's going to be hard to look the pizza in the eye. I Meets what I thought about as much as I love the pizza and pizza is such a treat. I thought about it the same way that you thought about it. And that is that the bottom line is when push comes to shove at the end of the day, I'm consuming more sandwiches than I am pizza. Now, I, you put a pizza in front of me, you put a sandwich in front of me. I'll probably eat the pizza, but I have more sandwiches. My day to day life consists of the sandwich, which would mean. I'd like to shack up with the sandwich to marry. To marry. What should wow, we? Wow, I didn't. I did not see that. Coming. I know. I know. And, and I just, did not. I did not see that coming. Nope. It, what it came down to me nope. was the day to day. What do I have more of? And and now you know I'm fucking the pizza. I'm fucking the slice. Oh my god, you're fucking the pizza. Um, if you honestly speaking, Bob, if you were to take pizza off and, and say I'm not, I don't eat pizza anymore. I honestly would have to reconsider doing this show with you because that to me is an unacceptable answer. You yeah. can't get rid of pizza. Yeah, no, you can't. Yet at the same time, I mean, there's really, it, it's tough to argue any kind of direction that you go. I mean, look, if somebody came to me and said they want to marry pasta, I wouldn't agree, but I I'd wouldn't say, hate I'd, it. I'd say, okay, congratulations. I wouldn't do it. Oh. I wish we got your Nona on to ask this question. I'll tell you what she would do. What would she do? What are the question? Okay. <laughs> I'm like uh, Mary the pasta. And uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'm a fuck of the pizza. <laughs> I don't need the sandwich. <laughs> My, because of me, I don't like a sandwich. I don't need to eat a sandwich. I like a pizza. Pizza is my favorite things. My, can I have a pasta? And that's it. <laughs> I, I wish I was a fuck gone. Why have we not had known on? We got to bring her on. Would no, she come bring... on? 
No, she. Uh, the thing about it is, I don't think she would get it. Like, I don't think like she would get what she was going on. She doesn't have to. She doesn't have to. No, but if 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 I put Nona on here with the headphones and you started asking her, hey Nona, kill fuck Mary, pasta pizza and a sandwich, huh? What do you say? <laughs> She wouldn't know what to do. She'd probably smile and say, great. I like a pizza. I like a pizza very much. Yeah. I think a pizza very good. The mother sandwich, I don't like. That's what she would say. Oh, man, that was tough to do. I I'm going like to have to give Nona a hug. When it I was, see it. yeah. It, it she was, makes phenomenal pasta. I phenomenal think what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to order the biggest, fattest bowl of pasta you've and ever just, seen. And just say, just say sorry. You've ever seen. Yeah. Just yeah. say so. You have to. You have to. Okay, Meats. Tough to bounce back from that, but now it's time. Let's let it rip. We want to hear from the piece, from the people. It's voicemail time. It's voicemail Let's- time. Tang along, and we're going to listen to the voicemail. <laughs> oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> and just to remind you folks, you could call the voicemail at any time. 347-470-3827. We want to hear takes, any and all takes. Nikki Meats, are we ready for the voicemail? Here? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. This is out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Shout out, Ohio. Let's go. Joe Upton, what do you got for us? Robbie and Nick. Hello. This is Joe Upton from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm an elevator mechanic. Uh, I know you generally don't ask for people's professions on here, but I think that it's kind of important that you guys know that you're reaching a lot of people out here, whether it's college kids in their dorm or somebody sitting at their computer desk or a dirty blue-collar guy like me turning wrenches on elevators. Uh, There's a lot of people out here who speak the language. And I just had a question for you guys that I feel is going to be fairly polarizing in the comments section, and it's this. What is your strategy when attacking a plate of food are you for example sitting down to eat some five guys and taking a bite of your burger and after a few chews throwing some bottomless fries into your mouth and then after another couple chews washing it down with some coke or are you finishing that burger a hundred percent and then moving on to the fries i'm just curious to know And does the quality of the food have anything to do with your answer for this? Is it sacrilegious to have mashed potatoes in your mouth at the same time as a $80 filet mignon? The people want to know. So please tell us. Thank you, guys. How many people talk like they're from Ohio? Joe Upton talks. Like he's <laughs> he talks from exactly Ohio. like he's Joe from Upton Ohio. is in no rush. He's Joe gonna get Upton is taking his damn time. He's thinking about what he's about to say. That guy is they got no care in the world about what's going on around him. He's yeah. gonna take his time. He's gonna make sure he hits all points that he wanted to get across. And can I just say, like, the impact that this show has on on people i probably said this before and i probably say it every episode but like every episode when i hear the voicemail it really hits me like like that guy's in an elevator working with wrenches and he's thinking about what's a good take to give to the pantry and like to me that's something that money can't buy and i i, I like i can't describe how it feels to have that sort of impact on someone and I just think it's fucking awesome. Like, I just think it's awesome. But yeah, anyways, it it, it 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 fires you up, too. It really does. And, and on top of that, it's a great question. But it's I will a, say this. It, it, on top of that, it's a phenomenal if, question. If you run up, come up upon a Joe Upton elevator, take the stairs. Take, because the <laughs> stairs are going to be fast. Because the, the stairs are going to be fast. <laughs> If you happen, if you happen to go to an elevator, <laughs> if you happen to come across Joe Upton in an elevator, <laughs> what you do is you either take the stairs or you get a helicopter ride to the, to the floor that you want to oh, go to. Uh, Joe, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joe. Joe, it's, Joe, it's all jokes, question. Joe. It's, it's all it's jokes, such, Joe. All jokes aside. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. 
phenomenal question out of Ohio there. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, you could do a full eight hours of work and come down. And Joe is still <laughs> cranking that nut that he was doing when he came in in the morning. <laughs> oh, OK, folks, we're going to let a rip. Right. phenomenal question out of Joe. Upton. Phenomenal. If I may, I, I, I it makes yeah. you think. And the more I thought about it, I, I thought about specifically the burger and fries. Yes. I'm a yep. Huge, huge. I see people who can eat a whole hamburger without taking a drink of water or anything. No, like that. no, no, I, no, I, no, I, no. And then what they do is they they're done with their meal and they take a massive chug of the water. No, or whatever drink no, they have. yeah. I'm against it. I'm a huge. I almost take a sip at it. I get every combination. So, for example, yes, burger yes. fry. I'm almost taking a sip every it, time. It's it, it's almost like you're doing like a workout. Like you do one set of a burger bite, you do one set of a French fry, and then you you do one set of the, of the soda sip. And there there's rare times where where I will go burger fry no drink burger fry then drink. Sometimes I'll double down. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'm also a huge fan of skipping the drink like at maybe I my I might even do burger fry burger fry burger fry drink so three but yeah, that see, drink I don't think that I, I get the third rep no but that drink that I take on the third is a big gulp like it, I'm getting a few sips into that one I I my standard practice is I'll go burger fry ketchup in there and then honestly sometimes even as I'm eating the fry I'll throw a little bit of uh, of whatever I'm drinking in there just to wash it all down, especially if it's a soda, I especially if it's a soda, soda like especially water, if it, I yeah. do. water. Yes. I could do that yes. Too. Great point. Great. If it's a soda, it makes it for it makes it a lot easier to do. Yeah. And the one thing I will say that I tend to do often is if there's a pickle that comes with that burger and fries, I eat the pickle on the side first. I take care of the pickle. First. Don't hate it. Don't hate I it. I take care. All. I take care of the pickle first but i definitely think that there's you have to have some sort of routine when it comes to a burger and fries you have to there's no way you eat the whole burger then you go to the fries then you go to the drink i think that's a psychopath move i don't think anybody does that and and you know what i i think we'd be surprised i've seen it a lot that people who could even do eat the whole hamburger then eat the fries and I, then I just, take a bit I, it's i've seen I, it before i don't I understand don't, i don't understand how you could do that to me like the whole experience is like you get the fries to complement the burger and then you wash it down with the drink you wash it yeah. down with the soda i mean to me i think that's the best way to do it is to have a rotation yeah and even regards to the steakhouse you know question as well i i don't I don't mind while you're for me when I'm just about to swallow the steak, throwing in mashed potatoes real quick yes, to where yes. the mashed potatoes and the steak and do the steak, touch. They do. They do touch. Before they do touch. the steak says goodbye. <laughs> you know what I mean? They do make a brief contact. They, they do dap each other up. Hey, how's it going? And then the steak says, "All right, I'll see you later." You know what I'm <laughs> saying? It's it's kind of like when you. This is where it's like it's like when you when you see someone, you're in a rush and you want to have a conversation. You're kind of walking as you're having a conversation. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's going. All right, I'll see you later. See you later. That's what the steak yeah, does with go. the mashed potatoes in the mouth. Yeah, you can't swallow those two at the same time. I'm also a huge fan. Of if I get a good side, I'll I'll dip my fork in the side just to you know get me going. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'll go side first. I'll go side first. Sometimes I think it's a phenomenal question. And the moral of the story is if you ever find yourself in Cincinnati, Ohio, when Joe Upton is fixing an elevator, you better take the fucking steps. Okay. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you too, uh, something that we don't think about much is even the process of eating. We always talk about the no. Food. Yeah, you're right. But you're in right. the in the process, and that's that the we, beauty of the voicemail is that it, it ignites these areas that we've never th thought about mentioning. I mean, even Paul Swan with the menu, you know what I'm saying? Like, totally. it's just it's just it brings a whole new perspective that we weren't even thinking about. Everybody's a pantry boy, man. Everybody. We're all everybody's got boys. something. We're all pantry boys and girls, man. We really, really are. I'll tell you what, Nikki Meats. I can't wait for Wednesday. I can't wait for next Wednesday. I can't wait. I can't wait to see. What people are going to say about the cookie list. I cannot wait to see the response on the cookie list. And I'm looking forward to people doing the Jack Arnold burger and putting it yeah. to the test. And I cannot us. wait to see that. And tag us. Tag the Pantry Boys. We see it. Tag me. Tag Bob. Tag the Pantry Boys. Fuck. Tag Jack Arnold and show him your masterpiece. Bob, another phenomenal episode. It's just so much fun. At the end of the day, it's just so much fun. There's and nothing better.
Eh, I, you know, I, I, I just, I love it. I really do. God bless you all. We'll see you next week on the fucking pantry. See you next week, folks. Take care.